When my left knee started hurting when I was running at age 17, my very first thought was, please don't let there be anything wrong with me. And I made a bet on that wishful thinking. And I ignored the pain and kept on running until the pain got so bad, I had to hobble home at least a few dozen times. Eventually, the pain got so bad that I actually quit running because I was afraid I wouldn't be able to hike anymore. That happened at age 22, and then two years later at age 24, the knee pain was so bad while hiking that I quit hiking. Now, I was afraid of getting help or trying to figure out what was going on with my knee throughout this whole time because I was convinced that someone would take one look at me and say, Sure enough, no doubt about it, you are defective. So one of the first places to look, one of the best places to look, if you're wondering if the physical pain or injury you're currently experiencing has to do with unhealed trauma, that place to look is your mind. What kinds of stories are you telling yourself in relationship to the pain? What fears are rising to the surface when you feel whatever pain you're feeling. Now, before I go any further, I wanna clear something up and just say that no, I don't believe that 100% of physical pain that we experience or injuries that we incur in life have to do with trauma. However, unless you have cultivated a really high degree of self-awareness and objective consciousness, and you can be with any pain and feel it fully while getting curious about it, then chances are when pain happens, no matter the cause, could be a car accident, twisting your knee, whatever, chances are when that happens, you're going to react to that pain through the lens of your survival patterns. So before I share any more uh, in this video, I wanna make sure that you know about my upcoming free workshop called Unlocking the Trauma Body, discover the ways your body locks you in pain and trauma patterns and how to work with your body to break free. I'm really excited about this workshop. It's brand new. I've never taught this exact material before. We're going to dive into all the ways that pain and trauma overlap, how trauma can manifest as pain in the body, how these survival patterns I'm talking about in this video dictate so much of whether we get free or stay stuck. I'm extremely excited to be offering this information and I'd love for you to join and you can find the link to register in the description box below this video. Now let's go back to my story and see if we can learn something from my story about how pain and trauma overlap. So throughout the time that I was experiencing the knee pain that started at age 17 and stopped me from running and hiking, that wasn't the only pain that I was experiencing on pretty much any given day, I was also feeling anxiety, digestive pain, a lot of jaw tension, overwhelm. I felt exhausted. I thought I was an introvert. There were all these things going on and each one of these things was further proof to me that I was defective and maybe utterly broken. Now I've come to the conclusion in hindsight that those beliefs, the belief that we are defective or broken somehow, you know, maybe in our body or our psyche, like something is just off inside, right? I've come to the conclusion that those beliefs are actually a coping mechanism for unhealed emotional wounds because it's a lot easier to think that our bodies are just not functional, right? There's something wrong with our body. It's a lot easier to think that, that they're just not working for us in some way, either our body or our brain, than to actually turn towards the memories inside that we're carrying here and confront them. Now, in order to make sense of all of this and make sure that you and I are on the same page, that we're actually having the same conversation here, I want to just define some terms. So I'm actually bringing this down to like a third grade level, which I think is really important actually to understand some of these concepts. So I define feelings as emotions plus sensations. Our emotions and sensations are usually felt together. One may be the trigger we feel at first and then it creates a cascade in the other, but they usually go together. And our feelings are literally how we make sense of ourselves and the world we live in. 
And I say make sense of because it's literally a, a sensory experience inside. We have, you know, a tactile engagement with the world. We sense other people, we sense ourselves, and then we figure out through all of these feelings how to interact with what's inside and what's outside so that we can live well, move our bodies well, and relate well with other people. And some feelings are pleasurable, some feelings hurt, but they're all natural. So what about pain? What is pain? Well, I define pain as injury prevention. It's a mechanism inside that alerts us to either emotional, maybe social, or physical danger. So pain is injury prevention. That pain is happening to prevent us from incurring damage. It's alerting us to some danger. And when we can learn to interpret those messages consciously and actually work with them, we can make good decisions and avoid bad ones and actually prevent damage or injury from occurring. For example, last year I was hiking and decided it would be a great day for a swim. And I had my swim and I was standing barefoot on a rock, turned around, saw a bear, backed up, fell into the river and twisted my knee really badly to the point that I ruptured my MCL and maybe even tore a couple of other muscle attachments. And unfortunately, I had to hike six miles out of the canyon where we had hiked into. It was a, a 2000 feet downhill climb and I had to get up those 2000 feet over about six miles on a ruptured MCL. And Every step was excruciating, very, very, very painful. Um, but that pain was my body's way of protecting me from doing anything dumb. Because if I tried to walk normally or step on a rock, maybe the wrong way, I could incur even more damage than I'd already incurred through the twisting. Um, because at this point, the, the injury had already occurred and I'm more vulnerable to further injury. So that pain signal my body is giving me is my body's way of preventing me from incurring even more damage, right? So it's an, a, a, a signal or an alert to me, the owner of the body, to be careful, right? To step carefully, to not do anything that would make it worse. Now, I never take painkillers, ever. I don't believe in them. And when that injury happened, I didn't brace my knee and I only used crutches for two days and tried not to use them unless I really had to. And the reason I did that is because of everything I'm sharing in this video, because I wanted my body to actually tell me what my limits were in terms of range of motion, in terms of activity. I wanted to know what's available to me right now and what's not. And so my body will tell me with a pain signal. And so as soon as my body would tell me, no, I don't want you to squat. It's way too soon for that. I'd come out of the squat or no, I don't want you to run. You can't run yet. Okay. I'm not running yet, but I can walk. And within two weeks after this really intense injury, I had pretty much no pain and I haven't really had much pain since I'll get little twinges, um, just doing everyday activities. However, if I tried to push my body beyond its limits, my body would ping me with that pain signal and say, it's too soon to sit cross-legged. You're not there yet. Or it's too soon to run. You're just not there yet. But I would continue to test it. So the whole point of what I'm sharing is that when we learn to tune in to those physical pain cues, at least in the case of this type of injury, we can make really intelligent decisions, not do anything dumb and not baby our body, right? Not anesthetize ourselves in any way. And then the body can get to work doing what it does best, which is self-regenerate and heal. Because the, the truth is these bodies of ours are amazing at self-healing. So moving on, let's define trauma now. I define trauma to mean any experience we're in that's painful, so we're experiencing painful feelings, sensations, and or emotions. And that experience becomes too much, too overwhelming. And we enact strategies to protect ourselves from feeling those painful things so that we can simply survive it and get through it. So the body will take over when it senses that we are no longer present. 
So trauma happens when we decide we can't be present for whatever painful experience we're in because we don't want to feel it fully. So trauma is protection from feeling pain, whether it's physical or emotional. And left untended, trauma really turns into sustained injury because we've cut off our conscious self from that part of us that really needs our attention to make good decisions, right? Good emotional decisions, relational decisions, and physical decisions in order to move well, live well, and relate well. So when we cut off those sensations or emotions, those feelings, we can't tune in and we can't do that. And this is a form of sustained injury. And I believe that's really what trauma is. So this might be something to keep in mind the next time you're tempted to reach for an aspirin, a Tylenol, a baby aspirin, right? Can't be that big of a deal. Or maybe you reach for a knee brace or some other quick fix, right? But keep in mind that when you do that, you're actually telling your body, I'm not available to feel that pain. And when you do that, you cut off that, that conversation with your body and your body has to take over. And when that happens, it activates a trauma response. So the antidote to trauma is to welcome those painful sensations and emotions, to allow painful feelings their rightful place in your life, because those feelings will actually guide you back to your whole self. In my opinion, being a healthy human means allowing our hurts to hurt. And being a wise or intelligent human being means tuning into those hurts and making those emotions or sensations conscious, consciously engaging them, developing a relationship with ourselves and our bodies such that we can tune in, interpret those messages correctly, and then make the wise decisions about what to do in any given moment. So working with thousands of people in pain since 2008, I've had a front row seat to how human beings relate to pain generally, on the whole, all of it. And I've had a front row seat, you might say, to pain psychology, how human beings actually relate to the experience of being in pain and then the process of healing. And throughout that time, I came to the conclusion that more of us are traumatized than any of us acknowledge. In fact, I would go so far as to say, I believe we're all traumatized. But here's the thing. There are many people among us who don't want that label. They don't want to be labeled traumatized. That word traumatized has come to carry a stigma with it. And until we normalize trauma as a universal human experience, a lot of people who are carrying some trauma may not turn towards it because it's kind of like society is telling us that we, the traumatized, are the blemish on the otherwise normal or beautiful human species. And that is the furthest thing from true. Until we normalize trauma, places like my office and a lot of the time in my online courses become a refuge for people to share their painful stories, their painful stories of physical injury and emotional wounds without needing to label themselves as traumatized. And if they had actually started with the label of I'm traumatized, if they had self-identified as that and sought out a psychotherapist instead of me, which is what I did at age 24, that person, that therapist, wouldn't even be allowed to touch them, right? And yet what I know is that most of us carrying these traumas, they live in our bodies. They are very physical. And a lot of the time being traumatized means carrying some really deep gnawing pain inside that no amount of talk therapy can touch. So I always left therapy feeling confused and angry because it just didn't seem effective enough. I wanted to get in there and actually contact the pain I was feeling. So I believe the best thing to do here when it comes to both physical pain and trauma 
is to me, the remedy is actually the same. It's to tune into our bodies and to allow the hurts to hurt, to then interpret those signals, to tune in and learn how to interpret them so that we can take really good care of ourselves. So I'm ready to contribute to a different kind of conversation here online, and I invite you to join me. And this is a conversation where I hope we can talk about the overlap between trauma and pain without having to stigmatize anyone, without any dehumanizing diagnoses that have to be part of the conversation. We can just talk about our painful emotional experiences and our painful physical experiences, connect back to the wisdom living in our bodies and learn how to self-heal because we can. I believe we can self-heal just about anything. It requires tuning in to that wisdom inside though and no longer cutting ourselves off from it. So I invite you to participate in this conversation with me. I would love for you to share your thoughts below in the comments section below this video. Please share this with anyone you think could benefit from it. And if you wanna participate and go further in this conversation, then please join my upcoming workshop called Unlocking the Trauma Body. And we're gonna have many more conversations just like this one. So again, the registration link is in the description below this video. Thank you so much for watching this and I will see you next time.